Hello, everybody. I'm Roadblock. We're on the free to play account, and you already know why I'm happy. I'm going to put it in the title. We did four key Ultra Nightmare. Now, there may be some question marks. I haven't designed the. Uh, the um, oh, hey. Shoot him, Kevin. Great timing. Thank you, uh, Lewis Groenwald, for becoming a member or, or renewing your membership. That's three months in a row. So, hey, thank you for that. But enough about that. Uh, I may put some question marks or, or sorta in the uh, in the title, but uh, I, I kind of wanted to show you guys exactly what happened. So uh, I logged in. Well, I, I, the game's been running all day, so we've easily cleared the Fire Knight tournament. Um, well, yeah, yeah, we cleared it. So I'm gonna pull those those shards here in a little bit, right? But if we go and we look, so the daily login reward was three clan boss keys. And then, in Clan v Clan, my clan is in Tier 3. So we actually get two extra keys right here. So I had five keys, and then I had two keys waiting for me when I got home from work. So that's seven total keys to use. I already used one key this morning on Nightmare. So I had some keys to play with, right? So I went ahead and used my second key in Nightmare, which gave me plenty. But then I went into Ultra Nightmare... And the, the goal for Ultra Nightmare is 70 million. We did 73 million. That's a four key, right? We did four keys. We had 73 million. There you go. So um, now I would not have taken that risk if I didn't have the extra keys. And I do want to put a slight asterisk here. The variance in keys was great. Like I had one that did 20 million and I had one that did 16. That's a big gap, and when you're talking about needing to hit, uh, I don't know exactly what I would need per key, but I always say in my head 20 million per key, because that would be 80, 80, right? Um, so you're looking to get in that, I guess that six, 16, 17 range, each key, so it's scary. It's not 100%. It still has its flaws, but it looks like we're at a four key Ultra Nightmare. And I'm happy about that. And I'm very excited to share that with you guys and talk about that. The good news is because I had all those other keys, I was able to do a brutal and a hard, uh, which is something that I started doing on my main too. I'm actually doing hard on my main now because I have four keys and, and I can one key everything. So I use that fourth key on hard now. And that just gets me a little bit of extra trash to sell, you know, a little bit of extra silver. Not going to complain about something like that. So Really, really happy about that. I also said I was going to show you guys my clan v clan points, and I'm in the wrong spot, of course. Uh, so I'm at 55,000 right now. That's after using most of my books. I've gained another book from doing my, my stuff. I've been putting my books into God Seeker, even though she's only level one, right? And only, you know, I haven't done anything with her. But she is a champion that I want to use. We really want to see this land on Quest for Meaning. And it lands on the A1, of course. But um, I'm going to get two more books at the end of this, I think. No, one more book. Sorry. Um, so I have quite a ways to go to improve my personal reward points. I don't think I'm going to do anything too crazy to up that. I've done the skills. I will forge whatever I'm able to forge. But I'm going to... Is it this account? No, I can forge easily on this account. My main account, I have to make room again, which is always so frustrating. But I will forge whatever I'm able to forge. Uh, I'll likely do that tomorrow uh, when I have a little bit more time. When I got home today, we did a lot of family time and stuff. So I haven't really been playing that much. And I have to get all my dailies and everything done today. Uh, because I won't have that time tomorrow. So uh, I really want to make sure I get that stuff done first. And then go and forge and do whatever other other things I need to do. I, I, I still feel like I'm on a good pace. Three, six. Sorry. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five. It's going to be really tight. We might come right up to the wire. Um, let's look at the daily challenge. Ten champions, that's easy. Using one... For this, this, they keep giving me this. 
And that is very hard for me to do. I don't use force in my current rotation. So uh, let me see if I can knock that one out real quick while I'm thinking about it on a couple easy teams. All right, here's two easy teams right here. So we're going to do this. The sound effect on that. I, when you hear, when you wear headphones, I don't know if it's going to come across with you guys, but the, uh, <laughs> like, usually you hear the big booms, but I don't hear the, the, uh, when they get hit. <laughs> so it's a really unique sound. Uh, and I only ever hear it when I have headphones on. Okay. Uh, I feel like, I know they have a more two, which is scary here, but, uh, I feel like we can blow this team up pretty easily. There, there. Good job. Come on, come on, come on. The very high resist, high shield. Okay. So that... Should be? Yeah, okay. So that was the hard one. Everything else I'll do just by playing the game tonight. So I wanted to knock that out so I didn't forget about it. Uh, so for the Forge Pass, I'm getting a little nervous about it. It doesn't feel as the easy that I'm going to get up here. I I did keep getting that Force one, and I've been skipping it, thinking, you know, okay, because you can skip a handful, but not a lot. So it's a little bit dicey coming in here. Um we will see how well that goes. I really want it because it's great gear. We really want to complete it, but who knows how that's going to end. Uh, I feel like there were some other updates. Yeah, I talked about the, the tournament. I am in first place on it. Let's look at the scores. This was another one that I went ahead and, and went all the way up here for the summon. Uh, I'm not first place on this tournament, so I don't know what tournament I am first place on. Is it the Sand Devil? It might be, because that's a one that people tend not to do. I am. Okay, cool. That seems like it's going to stick, but there's still a day and, and, and a half, so... Or less than a half, but... Okay. I'm just thinking if there's anything else that I want to... I want to cover it for you guys. Let's do a breakdown of clan v clan points. Like, let's talk about because something that I I keep seeing it in my own clan. Like, I'm gonna uh, uh, well, for, right out the gate, I've got people not showing up, so that's a you know, that's a big problem. But I see it all the time where people are failing to produce the points in clan v clan that 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 is expected of them and uh, you know when you see that, that I'm in 12th place like I'm way up here compared to, to my clan and I'm completely free to play right so what am I doing differently what am I doing that's getting me all these points that my clan members are not right that's a good you know kind of or well let's not say it like that but what what am I doing that other people may not be doing let's let's word it that way I like that a little bit better because I don't like to be negative. I like to be, you know, let's look at the positive on my account, right? So I save my books. Now that's something that cannot always be expected. A great example is on my main account, I've actually have had no legendary books to spend because I spent them all to level my Hydra team uh, that I released a video about the other day, which I really recommend you check out. I think it's a really, really cool team and... It's kind of an interesting concept that I don't see a lot of out there. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. And I may make a follow-up video and kind of go in a little more detail about it and see if I can promote that one a little bit more. But um, back to kind of the, the discussion at hand, I saved my books. Now, it's not always practical or, or uh, you may not be patient enough, but for me... As a clan leader, clan v clan is extremely important. So 
if my clan is going to be if my clan is going to carry my free to play account then i feel that i have to repay them by putting up a good clan v clan score now let's pause on that thought because i really want to talk about this a little bit and why i think clan v clan is important now i hear it all the time and i respect this opinion i hear it all the time where content creators say that clan v clan is not important to them and I totally get that sentiment. It's not a really great way to get resources. To be completely honest, you're probably spending more resources to get a little, a very few, little, a small amount in return. But one thing I want to point out, and I think it's very important to understand, is what the clan gets you. So if you're in my, if you're in my clan right now, in the shop which just refreshed, um, which let me go ahead and pick up these fragments. So it's one thing to be able to have these fragments and have legendary champions, right? But that clan gold can get you accessories. It can get you silver. It can get you energy. It can get you good gear. Killstroke is friggin' good gear. And a five to six star guaranteed piece without having to run a dungeon and it's good gear, like... You know, like, you have access to stuff that's really good. And a part of that is because my clan is high level. You may be in a clan that's not high level or whatever. But the way I look at it is the this clan kind of has given gives me a head start, right? If we think about the free-to-play challenge account, which news will be coming on that soon. But if we think about the free-to-play challenge account, on that account... I was in a brand new clan. I didn't have access to... I didn't have access to shit. <laughs> like, uh, I just didn't. Where, you know, I'm getting carried on a free-to-play. Respectfully, but I am getting carried. by my, I'm carrying my own... I'm carrying myself by, by having a very powerful main account. But uh, if we look at the members, you know, we've got people that are putting up 200, you know... 100, over 150,000 in points. And they're carrying this, this account. Obviously, we're carrying other accounts. And that's fine. My point is that if they're going to do that, then the least I can do is at least try to contribute as much as I can. Which, for me, is saving books. I'm not trying to convince you to do that. Every clan is different. Every clan has their own rules. I don't require my members to to, to uh, save their their books. However, they do have a minimum to hit, and it's much easier for them to hit that if they save their books, right? So it's th that kind of thing. But um, while the direct resources may not necessarily be anything too crazy, you know, for in this case, we've got a void shard, we've got an epic skill tome, and eight two ancient shards. That's not that's not anything crazy for 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 this account for the amount of resources that I'm spending like I'm spending energy I'm spending gems we just saw how value the valuable those can be when it comes to a fusion but I have access to tier three rewards I don't have that if I when I'm on that new clan on the free to play challenge account we're tier one I can get one ancient shard out of that all that hard work right and personal rewards i'm tier one too so i can get one epic skill tome if we win and if i'm able to put up a hundred thousand points so the way i look at it is i'm repaying the clan for giving me access to better rewards because even then we're also getting access to to to, to multiple accessories now i can't recall but i think it's here at level one you only get one ring in each of these slots i could be wrong about that but here we're getting multiple of those and we're getting access to ones that are are really darn good i can't remember what set that is uh i don't i wouldn't have that well i might have those on this account if we've earned them before i i don't know uh, let's look at next. I'll make sure we do equipped to just in case that yeah. okay, so these are Okay, so they're the shield next so nothing too crazy, but if you've done 
Scarab boss, you know how valuable having those shield accessories could be, but still, I, I'm rambling, and I apologize for that, guys. I just wanted to kind of double down on my point that I don't think Clan v. Clan is a waste, and I'm of the mindset that, that it's really fun for me, and again, this is a personal decision, to save those resources, use them during this period of time when I can gain benefit. Now, you can make the argument that you could use your books during a champion training tournament. Those count during those. That's a great time to use them. If you're not worried about Clan B Clan points, that's when I would recommend using them. But for me personally, I put Clan B Clan higher than those tournaments because I could also get those same points just leveling champions if I wanted to. It's They don't have to wait and use those books, but they're really high point values here. Back to the rest of what I was trying to say. Sorry for my little rant there. The other thing that you can do is forging. So right now, uh, I don't have anything worth forging because I've forged it all. But if I wanted to, I could forge the four to five star. I'm uh, not that I, I I wouldn't do that personally. Um, but there is I can forge my perception and my resilience gear. Um, so that is let me show you kind of the point totals. This is where I use my charms. I'm definitely going to go for some mythical perception gear. That's for certain. I'm not going to use any of these, though. Um, and we're going to go ahead and craft 10 of these and let's see what we get. No mythicals. Okay. Only one legendary, but we can take a look and see. So we've got accuracy with crit damage. I'll sell that one. Um, we've got speed, but no accuracy with crit damage and resistance. I'm not a big fan of that one. Flat stats. Speed and resistance. I really want to see accuracy there. Okay, here we go. Ooh, I like this one a lot. This is, look, this is a great weapon. This is amazing. So we're getting crit damage and crit rate on a weapon with attack percent. I mean, for an attack-based nuker, and it's six-star, you couldn't ask for better. And then even that little bit of accuracy on there, that can really benefit for certain types of nukers out there that that, that need that. So that is a 100% keeping that. Now we have an attack percent-based chest. I don't have a lot of these. The substats are pretty bore, poor, but I'm low on these. So I'm going to keep that one. Um, attack percent gloves if there was ever a set that i would want to keep attack percent gloves it would be perception for a bomb based champion uh i'm not a huge fan of the stats on this at all but there is a niche opportunity that may come up in the future where i would keep that crit damage and attack percent there's a there's a chance that that could be valuable if i'm able if i'm running if i'm running crit rate gloves those that weapon could be really good. Sell those. Already looked at this. And then we have crit rate. Yeah, I would sell this. That's not really what I'm looking for from per a perception piece. And I would continue to do that, right? I would con continue to roll that, that gear. I forgot to show you guys how many... I forgot to... You guys could clearly see how many points they were, but I forgot to point it out. So let's go ahead and do it one more time, and I'll focus on the points this time. Let's skip through it all. 2300 points that's a pretty good chunk of points hp percent boots i don't see myself using those uh no no I l yeah, there's a very low chance that those get used anytime soon, but in the future, those would be very valuable. Speed, resistance, crit damage. A lot of six-star rolls, too. I'm really happy about that. Just wish I had speed and accuracy on this. I think that's a sell. And that's a sell. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we saw how many points that was. That's a big contribution. So that's one of the things I do. Then the other thing is making sure that you're doing all of your usual stuff. So make sure you're spending your crypt keys, your fortress keys if you can do it, your tag team arena tokens, and doing classic arena as much as possible during this time frame as well. 
that is going to generate a lot of points for you. So, um, so spending your books, forging. The other thing to, to, to think about during the Clan B Clan tournaments is the specific objectives that give extra points. Minotaur gives extra points right now. So if you need to farm something, if, you, if you've been waiting to farm Minotaur, now is a great opportunity because you can get an extra 20,000 points by farming Minotaur right now. Same with potion keeps, but really, I don't think anybody focuses too much on potion keeps during during these. Maybe they do. I don't. Um, Dragon would be a good place to farm right now, too. Spider tends to give a ton of points, though. So if you do, like, like hard spider is 350 points, where hard dragon is only 175 points, right? Um... And you'll see Minotaur is only 160 with the extra bonus right now. So Minotaur is actually better than than not not better than Dragon with the bonus, but it's better than Dragon normally. Um, Ice Golem and Fire Knight are all the same, but I tend to do Spider because Spider gives me more silver, and I tend to have an easier time getting rid of bad accessories than I do getting rid of bad gear. So. Um, so for me on my main account, I pretty much just do spider. So for this time, for this particular event, I'll probably, I should, it makes sense to knock out the dragon if I'm, if I'm being smart about it, because that's, sorry, so it would be this, so 175 and 175. What's that? 275. So it's still less. No, because it's 300 and then so 350. So it's 350 right now. It's the same. It's the same. I would just do spider then. doesn't really matter. Okay. Anyways, enough about that. Let's get to the best part of the video where I get to pull a champion, right? I'm excited about that. What are the progressive ch chances? I'm just curious. Somebody in my... I don't know if it was my clan chat or my dis my uh, Discord for this for the uh, the YouTube channel, but somebody did ask about these champions. Brogni is amazing. I would love to have a Brogni. I have a Helicath now on my main account. I've got Valkyrie. Uh, I you know Arc Archbishop. I know he used to be really good, but his kit isn't as impressive to me anymore. And, and maybe I'm sleeping on it, but. Um, He is a good support. I didn't realize this was a heal. I didn't read the full thing. So a heal with increased defense and a sh small shield because it's only 30% of their HP, um, which can be various sizes. Uh, increased accuracy is kind of valuable, though. And I do like the block buffs as well. And then you have this, which I, I don't think the A1 is anything too crazy i do like the chance of stealing but i don't think it's anything too crazy but i could see it if you don't have a support this can be a good it's a good heal with that increased defense um and a little a little shield but it's definitely not uh not as good as some other other kits out there so and what were the void the void ones Oh, a lot of people are going to be spending a lot of money this weekend. <laughs> this is going to draw in a lot of money, a chance to go 15 times 15 on Marishka. Marishka. Um, I have no interest in doing that on this account. What is my mercy at on the free to play? 25 but that's not accurate because i haven't been tracking it at all time the whole time and on the main account i'm at 121 it's really tempting actually no i wouldn't go for marishka i would rather go for uh terrace because i think he's tomorrow right don't mind me while i 
Yeah. Darius. Mm. There's a good chance I may pull for him tomorrow. We'll see. Keep an eye out for a shard pull video coming soon. All right. Let's go ahead and knock this out. We've got our 30 crystals to summon a prism shard. So here we go. Let's see what we get. Epic. Okay. I'm actually excited about this. I'm very excited about this. Um, I really like Mordecai for a couple of different areas in the game. And I want to talk about why. So what I love about Mordecai is that he uh, places his HP burn. There is no attack associated with this. That means that he can get past the Poison Cloud on Hydra. And you don't have to worry about it not landing. It will land on everybody. There's no affinity. There's no weak hit. Because there's no hit. He just places the buff. And then gives your team increased attack. Cool. And then does a little bit of turn meter. Filling your turn meter and decreasing enemy turn meter. Which is always nice. Also does that with the A1 as well. It's only 10%. But it it's still turn meter control. So he... I love his kit. And he's really, really good in my opinion for spider... Uh, for spider so that may between him and cold heart that could really change my and i basically have my unkillable team my not unkillable i basically have my spider team my hp burn spider team from my previous account now my, my main account my main account used a combination of Ultimate Death Knight and Godseeker and Neri with Cold Heart, Mordecai, and the extra one in there for this account would probably be Armiger, um, or maybe even maybe even Allure or Soul Bond possibly could could fit in there as well with her her full turn meter depletion, but. Um, yeah, that's really funny that I actually have the the full team. And so basically the way that would work is I'd light them all, all the spiderlings on fire. They would attack because they can only attack uh, Ultimate Death Knight because of his passive. He dies. Godseeker revives him. They all attack him. He dies again. Godseeker revives him. Meanwhile, we just keep the burns just keep rolling. So that, that was my team for that. And uh, I think and Mordecai is great for that team because he doesn't do any damage to the spiders. He just puts the, po the the HP burn on them. So I have my spider team. That should get me into spider hard. I don't really have a spider hard team at the moment. I suppose I do. I suppose I do. If I if I was to do something with like Cold Heart, uh, Sun Wukong, Rathalos... And then probably UDK and Godseeker. Who knows? I've definitely got some some stuff to play around with. So I'm really excited about that. That's a good pull. I really, that honestly was one of the ones when I looked at the summoning pool, I was like, I would really like to get Godseeker and Eerie. I, pfft, sorry. I'd really like to get Mordecai. This also really opens up a big part of the game that I'm going to have to start progressing in. I'm going to make this short because, you know, I, the video is already going longer than I'd like. But, um,. Look at how stacked my Sacred Order is now. We've got Deacon. We've got Godseeker. We've got Mordecai. Right? If I really wanted to push it far... Uh, actually, even Carlinia... I'm trying to look and see if she has any. I like her little mini cleanse and the strength in that she would bring. Um, and hell, maybe even Talia. 
uh, or Lady Atessa could could come in with some some damn. Actually, no, it would be Car. No, I wouldn't need Cardinal if I've got Godseeker. So I've got some some champions to play with now in this in this faction. But worst case scenario, I would do with Thal, right? I know I'm not a big fan of her on the main account, but she does have a big AOE hit, which we could easily put her in a stun set for a little bit of extra crowd control. And it does she does hit pretty pretty hard. I could build her to to hit hard, especially on this free to play account because it's a little bit stronger. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not too I'm not I'm not all that disappointed with my current roster for Sacred Order, and I feel like I could could get some work done. Or actually, no, shoot, I have Armiger. I forgot about that. So yeah, I'd have Armiger in there too. So. Uh, Deacon, Godseeker, Armiger, uh, Mordecai, and then I, like, then it would probably be maybe Carlinia or Talia or Lady Atessa. Some, somebody with big nukes that could come in and, and kind of hit, hit pretty hard. Even, a uh, even a a Aothar is pretty, pretty good with his, uh, bringing poisons. So I might actually be able to make some real progress in faction wars which i think will be really valuable to the account then i'll be able to forge more gear faction wars is an area of the game that i've been slacking on a little bit but it's going to catch up it has caught up to me because now some of the missions i need to complete are doing stages of faction wars and i still don't have uh barbarians to unlock and and take a look at but yeah so cool well that's everything i want to talk about so uh a little bit of a longer video sorry about that i uh i do want to say if you're new to the channel um <clears throat> totally lost my train of thought but if you are new to the channel or if you've been here for a while and still are not a subscriber I am making a push for 1,000 subscribers. I'm at 936 the last time I checked, and we are so, so close. So if you like my content, please subscribe so you can see more of it. Uh, but subscribing does more than just, just that. It also heavily supports the channel so I can continue making content by getting to that 1,000 subscriber tier in which I would be able to, uh, to gain access to some new monetization options for myself which makes it easier for me to to create this stuff and and you know get get some something back for it right so um if you want to help somebody achieve their dream of of making content on on youtube and that kind of stuff please subscribe and without any further ado i'll let you guys go so thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time